How cool would it be to take a friend to UFC 300? You guys get to hang out with Jocko and then go hang out with Bo Nickel at his post fight party. Because Jocko Fuel is giving you a chance to do just that. Two tickets, airfare, and accommodations paid for. Plus, you'll get a VIP escort from Jocko Fuel to show you around Vegas. All you have to do to enter is go to JockoFuel.com, make a purchase, or just click on the link below. Tom Aspinall has called out Curtis Blades. I must tell you, that caught me out of left field. I didn't see this coming at all. Now, here, let's, let's tie this in just a little bit. Dana did an interview yesterday, and Dana was talking about England. And he was talking about going back to England and how it was going to be massive. And Dana talked about, we have two British champions now, talking about Tom Aspinall, talking about Leon Edwards. Hold the thought. I mean, that, that's as far as this part with Dana goes, but I didn't fully know what to make of it. I mean, it. Just because there was an idea and a notion and a theme that the UFC hasn't been to England in a while. I don't know where they go or when they go there. Like some people are really good at that. They could tell you, well, at UFC 152, we were at the, or at UFC 209. I mean, you, you understand these types of things. And my mind does not work that way. But, but even in light of that, I know a whole bunch of times they went to England right off the top of my head. I fought in England. It was a meaningful amount of time ago, but I did. Portnoy went and sat front row right after he got done sponsoring Molly and Patty the Batty, and that was in England. In fact, that same night, the main event was Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades, and that was in England. I know when Edwards fought Kamar Usman for the trilogy, March of 23, it was in England. I don't know when or how often or other times they've been, but that, I mean, that was just produced for you off the top of my head, and I'm not a guy that's really all that good at producing those things. My point being, I'm sitting out here in Oregon. They don't ever come to Oregon. The last time they came to Oregon was a fight night, and it was headlined by John Dotson after his opponent failed to make weight. But, I mean, that was many, many years ago. So... Now we have Aspinall calling out Blades. I don't know if the relevance is they're getting ready to go back to England, so we got to put some guy on top of the bill, or if these aren't tied together, but Curtis Blades in his last outing in Miami has a record set against him. Almeida took Curtis down, I believe it was nine times in one round. If I'm wrong, it was eight times in one round, but that was a record. Nobody had that many takedowns. And in the second round, Almeida went for that exact same takedown, pushed Curtis up against the fence, looking for that double leg. Curtis dropped an elbow on him. But somebody else had done that. I believe that was Travis Brown to Josh Barnett. But just show the effectiveness of the, in that position. Once you're pushed in that position, but now you freeze, everybody's frozen just for a moment. Boom, there's an open shot. Fine. Curtis wins. Curtis calls out. Tom. Now... I got to tell you, from the X's and O's, just the pure skills, punches, kicks, wrestling, size, height, everything that you would throw, all the ingredients that you would throw into the backs, the box here. Curtis is as skilled of a heavyweight as I can think of. Curtis by X's and O's is the most difficult fight for John Jones in the heavyweight division. Curtis brings so much to the table but he's never fully caught on with you guys. Curtis fought Tom. And don't think you need to, don't think you need to correct me that I don't know how this whole thing went, but these accurate sort of statements I'm about to make are very accurate for you. Curtis fought Tom. Curtis won in the first round by TKO. Curtis goes on to be a feature matchup of an undercard, Tom goes on to win a world championship at Madison Square Garden. It would make a level of sense that Curtis and Tom fight. Curtis called out Tom. I thought that Curtis did everything right. There was one glitch when Curtis was laying out the case for himself. He was 
very emphatic, and he's done this before as well, but he was very emphatic to the idea that he will only fight people in front of him in the rankings. And the reason that's a problem, there is a very clear subconsciousness to the UFC. They don't get told what to do. I mean, just so you know, I've seen a lot of guys dig their feet in, whether they meant it or not, whether they were cutting a promo and their words got away from them, whether they clearly thought it through or not. I have seen people dig in, but they don't win when they do that. And I don't believe that that's some kind of a conscious thought. Don't give a guy what he asked for. I don't think it's like that. I think that it's subconscious, but there, there is a boss and there are not bosses. And I only bring it to you because if we were to take Curtis's statement as well as he laid it out, as good and, and solid of sense that Curtis made, if we accept that as an absolute, we can't just apply it to Curtis. We must also apply that to Curtis's opponent, who in this case would be Tom, but we can't do that. Tom is champion. He's number one. So if all Tom will do is fight people that are equal or in front of him, Tom's sitting there fighting nobody. Just for example, it would be impossible for Tom to then fight Curtis. That's the biggest problem with the statement, but it's the reason it got held up. Okay, guys, I'm not, just, I'm not just banging a drum on semantics here. I'm making a very good point for you why Curtis Blades, who did a call out after a very impressive victory, didn't get anywhere with it. There's a problem with everything, right? When something doesn't go, you got to stand back and look and go, why did this happen? I don't believe that, that, that Curtis would be aware of that. I know he's trying to make his case. And I know time and time again, Curtis gets a phone call to do something really hard, and he always says yes. So as much as he says, I won't fight anybody behind me, if they call him and ask him to, sure he will. He's great about that. It's one of the many things that Curtis does so well, which is one of the many things that gets me so confused as to why you guys have never quite latched on to him, but here we are. And now Tom Aspinall has finally said a name, which Tom has not done. Even when Tom made his push for John Jones, it wasn't perfectly clear in any interview that he had called John out. He had said that he would like to fight him. He had said that it's interim champion versus undisputed champion. He had said that as a match, but he didn't make it perfectly clear. You, I'm talking about you, you and me. He didn't make it perfectly clear. He has made this one very clear, and he said it's professional, and that they have their reasons, and that Curtis would understand what those are. I get it. I feel like we all understand it. I, too, feel that they have unfinished business. I don't know that Tom alone calling out Curtis gets it done. I don't know about that. I mean, they're going to have to look at it from all sides, including what if we end up putting the belt on Curtis? Like, all of those things have to be taken into account. And now are you starting to see the problem? Imagine Curtis is champion. This is not about he doesn't have an ability to sell. He can't draw. It's not about any of that stuff. Don't, don't go. It's a, we have a guy. Let's say that guy is champion. Who is this guy and what does he believe? Who is he at his core? Is this a guy we can be partners with? We have a guy who has said, I will not fight anybody except for people that are in front of me. So if he becomes your champion, who can you expect him to fight? How much do you think you're going to be able to work with him? At what point does that statement, that hard and fast statement that he has made time and time again, go away? Does it go away when he has the belt? I mean, understand John Jones in a decade has not fought anybody ranked higher than him. You understand that? You understand that Khabib in his entire title run never fought anybody that was ranked in front of him. I mean, you, you understand the difference? And please don't come and tell me, well, there's contenders and there's champions. I, I'm not against that. Bel believe me. I know we have to take it with a grain of salt. And I know that things change. All I'm saying is we have a guy who has made the statement time and time again enough that I'm starting to believe him. I can either believe Curtis and not give him the title shot, or I cannot believe Curtis and give him a title shot. But now I, I, had, I had to say that he was insincere. Do you see the problem?
for Curtis to fight Tom, that would be Curtis is fighting somebody in front of him. But Tom to fight Curtis means that Tom doesn't apply the same logic and he's the champion. So what, what is it that the champion doesn't know? What is it that the contender has right that the champion has wrong? Because they're not saying or doing the same thing. Nobody's getting a fight or losing a fight because of a couple of comments that they made at a press conference. I get that. But there are ideals and words do matter. And when you start to dig in, you, you start to really lock into a position. If you are to have the moral high ground and you're attempting to grab the people, well, then those words have to be right. The idea that I wouldn't fight anybody unless they're in front of me, but that doesn't, I don't want that to apply to my opponent. I want him to slide down the ladder instead of, right? I think you see what the problem is. Huge opportunity to be called out by Tom. First person that's been called out by Tom. I'm marrying those topics together. The interview I read yesterday about Dana going back to England and Tom's statement today. I'm the one bringing those together. But I think that there's some legs to that. But your fundamentals and your ideals can't be separated to the extent that the only thing I'm going to do as a contender is the very thing that I need my partner who is the champion to not do.